My name is Lee Maghrebi. I'm the head of an organization called Sharp. And together with my partner, Alexander Sandel, who you can see through the window there, uh, we have been uh, hosting a series of debates under the title Syrian Culture in Times of Conflict. Uh, this evening's debate is the seventh in our series, and we are holding it together in partnership with Global Week for Syria. Um, we are delighted to present a panel of... We are delighted to present um, a distinguished panel of four experts in uh, different niches of music. And I will start with my neighbor, Nida Abu uh, who is a professor at the University of Antonia? Antonia University. Um, and next to him is um, Arkham musicologist Richard Dumbrell, a leading expert in the Arkham musicology of the Near and the Ancient Near and Middle East. And next to him is Jean Durin, um, an ethnomusicologist and director of research at the French National Centre for Scientific <coughs> Research. And last but certainly not least, uh, Laurent Aubert, who is the director and founder of Atelier d'Ethnomusicologie. Um, in? Internet. Internet. Um, the topic today is preserving musical heritage, and the main question that we would like to answer is, does Syria need its past to build a creative future? So there is a lot we can discuss there, and we have time, and um, we, I will begin by asking a few questions of our panelists, so by way of introduction, and then we will open the floor and hope you will have uh, some exciting questions for us. Um, I would like us to touch upon the issues of diversity and unity, history and identity. Um, and I will start with you, uh, Stesnida, if you don't mind. Uh, my question, how does music relate to identity? In so much as, uh, whether we are talking globally or in terms of the Syrian context, why is it important to preserve musical heritage insofar as it relates to a national identity or an identity of community? This is a very important question, and perhaps the answers about it might be numerous, inasmuch as there are many uh, uh, frameworks and uh, methodologies, but my main answer is based on a linguistic question. A people or a region or a group of people who, who, who speak, uh, let us remember, the, the, uh, the question uh, uh, Ferdinand de Saussure uh, spoke about the trilogy of language and speaking and speech. Music is a language. Uh, it's uh, uh, a human faculty, a human universal faculty. There are many languages in the world, and each language is a system, a system, a linguistic system. And a, a, a phoneme, a group of phonemes, which contribute in communication and expression, and uh, which is organized. And this is this applies to languages, spoken languages, and musical languages. So there are many languages in the world and linguistic systems related to different cultures. In the, there are also many dialects, whether in speech or in music. And this faculty, which is language, throughout all these systems is crystallized with each speaker or whether linguistic or token through texts, whether spoken text or musical text. And these texts are various 
to the realization of communication and expression, which includes a number of possibilities that come throughout history and the past and can be projected into the future. Denying the variety of languages and dialects and doing without them or simplifying them, uh, which is a common th uh, treat in uh, globalization is something against the development of human uh, human uh, culture uh, is a crime uh, perhaps not as serious as the crimes that are perpetrated in Syria but it is essential it is very important to see that there is there is one common language with many dialects in this Levant. Let us talk about uh, the uh, uh, Fertile Crescent or the Bilad Sham, including Iraq. This is a basic language based on different maqams and different rhythms. And it's very important that we develop it and it so that it comes to be uh, it comes to crystallize as uh, the language of the Dad, the, the common language between us in this Levant and in, in the um, Orient in general. Richard, if I can ask you a, a related question. Uh, so the concern is that uh, music is a language and it is part of culture. And uh, if we allow it to become extinct, it is part of a greater cultural extinction that is not good um, for a community's identity. Um, you look at extinct civilizations and their music. How and why, why rather, is that important for our understanding now? Those civilizations are extinct. Why do we need to understand their music? Well, it's not only the music, it's all forms of uh, phonemes, uh, which music is part. Uh, um, it, it is, it is uh, uh, there is a common source of utterances which are common to a whole region. For instance, if you stamp on the foot of somebody, the sound generator will be, ouch, I but something similar. So there's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, so we have a common base, a common linguistic, uh, common linguistic utterances which, which are shared uh, uh, throughout. Uh, Nida Abouman clearly mentioned that you have divergence of differences which correspond to colloquialisms here and there, which have not uh, uh, concurrently true musical expressions. And, and it is essential that from all these colloquial variations, which it is in linguistics and in music, we come back to a source, uh, which is the basis of it all, uh, because we can share it. And emotionally, this will allow us to understand each other better. This is why it's very important to come back to the source. But why ancient civilizations? I understand uh, appreciating and understanding the cultures of today amongst which we live. But why that of 2,000 years ago? Because it is the, the basis, the source of it. And you cannot uh, 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 cut the tree, uh, distinguish the branches from the roots. This is absolutely out of the question. Uh, so therefore, it is essential that we come back to the roots. I mean, I've led other projects with uh, Palestine, where, for instance, we tried to find common uh, uh, phonemes uh, 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 of, of uh, Hebrew and, and Arabic, uh, uh, essential phonemes, which children could start improvising from linguistically and musically in order to bring back on the unconscious and the non-conscious their, their, their feelings, and their feelings that try to share their emotion in this way. So I think this uh, could be also applied to, to, to the, the, the current circumstances. When we find that we have, uh, we share phonemes, we start to develop uh, 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 links which cannot be achieved by any other means than this one. Thank you. I'm going to assume, Jean, that you agree with the value of preserving musical heritage and ask how you would uh, suggest to cultural actors um, focused on Syria 
how you would suggest they preserve Syria's musical heritage during this time of conflict? Okay, there is a, a theoretical debate, debate, a general debate, um, uh, and, and to go further in these uh, ideas, um, I say um, you you cannot uh, you, if you don't know your own history, you will really have an identity problem. Uh, let me, for instance, you, me, if you don't know who are your parents where you come from, and so on, so you, you, you may have a really psychological problem, uh, instability. I think it's, it's the same for a nation, when, when you forget what you have done, where you come from, uh, it's very hard to, 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 to survive, just even to survive. Another point is that the knowledge of common roots will help people to live peacefully and, and uh, neutralize uh, antagonism. You know, like speaking about uh, the Semitic uh, culture, then uh, it dissolves uh, some ethnical or uh, political problems we may have, or, or, or looking at the origin of, for instance, uh, common origin of religion, like Abrahamic religion, unified uh, believers. So this is one thing, no, no to, to get to concrete uh, actions. Of course, uh, th there is urgency uh, to, to keep all these things, but not only to keep it. We, we are doing this for uh, all time long. Every, every day people are uh, filling uh, archive centers. We have this, for instance, in CNRS, National Center of Research in, in our music, ethnomusicological team. Hundreds of hours of uh, recordings. Recently, we had an uh, agreement with Tunisia to put all what they have in, in a big uh, internet site accessible, and not only accessible to anybody, but also with uh, um, digital tools which, which helps to, for instance, select select. If you look for for a rhythm uh, in seven beats, as we have done here, you, you may even have an, uh, an analysis uh, instant, instantaneous, and, and then uh, it, it can be a tool, not, not only uh, for, for enjoying uh, music, but, but to use it. And, and so uh, th this is one thing, uh, storing uh, exactly what we try to do in, in uh, archaeology. You save the thing, but it's not only to put them in a museum, you have to use it and, and to open the doors of the museum. And here, uh, I think, uh, as I say yesterday, uh, we, we should really think uh, of uh, uh, propagating these ancient sources. If you open, uh, in the hotel, I, I tried uh, make 600 uh, TV channels <coughs> just to see what, they were almost all Arabic, which is okay, fine, uh, in all, all the, Arabic uh, region, but uh, there were al almost no Ar Arabic music, or it was uh, mixed. Uh, and why isn't in there uh, no uh, channel for? Or maybe there is. This you know better. Uh, in in France, we have France music. This is a channel only for, uh, I would say, professional music, including. Uh, uh, and also, uh, Arte, uh, no, no, Arte, uh, speaking about radio, first radio, radio, I think radio is more important because uh, you, can do, you can work, do anything and listen to radio at the same time. You cannot watch TV uh, and, and see the musician. So we have a radio station, France Music, uh, which is very, has had very important role even in, in uh, musical analysis, cri cri critique, critique musical, and also knowledge of history because people come and talk. But even if they don't talk, just music, music, good quality music. Uh, and the, the, in some country, I've seen sing analogic, uh, analog thing. Like in Uzbekistan, they had broadcasting every day two hours of classical music, and 
Uzbek classical. Uzbe Uzbek uh, classical uh, music. And this was very important. I know musicians who learn only by radio. Turabek Nabiev, great, great singer, maybe the encyclopedia of Uzbek and Tajik. He had no teacher. He learned by ear through radio, and after years, he went to see some master who said, you are wonderful. You well, see? he was clearly motivated to do so, which is very good. And I'll use that to go on to my next question, and we will uh, all have many more questions. But if I may ask you, Nora, how do you encourage a people, or a youth, that is no longer, it seems, interested in the music of its country, the heritage music of its country, um, to, to be interested again, particularly now in times of conflict. It seems uh, that more Syrians, since that is our focus today, uh, I would say more Syrians, youth of the Syrians, want to listen to medieval Western music or genres that derive from the West and perform in those genres rather than in what is traditionally Syrian? How do we encourage them, or do we even need to encourage them to, to be interested in, in the music of the, the heritage of their homeland? Well, of course, the first thing is that they should have an opportunity to listen to that sort of music, because, uh, as it was mentioned, it's very difficult for, for a young person living in Beirut today, I think, to listen to good, uh, let's say, classical uh, Arabic music in Beirut, where to listen to that? It's not uh, the radio, it's not on TV. There's no, there are no places to, to listen to that, if I'm not wrong. So this is the main problem. And I think it starts with that to give opportunities. But then who should give? Because there should be money for culture. And I guess uh, in Syria, and even in Lebanon today, there's not so much money for culture. So that's a crucial problem. And uh, in certain other cultural contexts, uh, maybe here too, the passage uh, abroad of certain musicians can be a motivation. Because if this music is not heard here, at least people can know that somewhere in Paris, in London, in Japan, or in the United States, there are fans of that music. And I guess it's it's easier to <coughs> to to, uh, to music from uh, Lebanon or Syria in Paris than in Beirut or even of course in Damascus today, and that, that's the main problem. How to reintroduce this in in the habits of listening? So maybe radio channel is of course. But why is it important? Idea. If the youth prefer other genres, rap, hip hop, rock. Why is it important oh, that we entice them? That's fine. No, your question was for, for those young people who yeah. want that. Yes, well, also, so, uh, mm. part of the question, let's say part B, is mm. why? Why if, do we need to preserve the musical heritage, the tradition of listening to and performing in uh, what we call classical Arab music or uh, folk yes. Arabic music? Mm. Is, it, is that important? Do we lose part of our identity if we don't preserve that music, whether in the archives or on, in daily life or in the theatre? Mm. Well, you know, well, I, I think the, the, there's one phrase in the, in the Quran which says, God is beautiful and like he loves beauty. So maybe that's enough. But uh, yeah, for the sake of beauty, it's one thing. And uh, it's a language. So we can accept that a language is slowly disappearing. But there are so many secrets that there are so many, I mean, such a, yeah, the question of heritage is something, but the fact that today it has something to, to, to bring to mutual understanding between peoples. And one part of my work in, in Geneva is to organize concerts of so-called world music and even so-called traditional world music. And I have the feeling that, maybe I'm wrong, but that when you, you have been moved by a music that you did not know before, but suddenly you realize that it touches you, I mean, you, uh, something deep within you, then it's, it's a tool against racism, uh, against the rejection of the other. And in the case of uh, Arabic music, what a kind of Arabic music, that can help to see that 
these people are not only making war, but they can also make music. And uh, because this is the horrible image that we have of the Arab world today in Europe. So it's very important to you fight, and music can be a weapon for that. Thank you. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, yes, I agree. Uh, always I agree with you. Wrong. Sometimes Not we totally. disagree <laughs> on, on details. Uh, there is one thing. Uh, some music, uh, uh, each music doesn't give the same effect. So mm -hmm. it's like food, you know. You can... Uh, uh, there is mu uh, music, mm, how say, uh, consumable. Edible. You, uh, mm. Edible. Not edible. Commercial. Edible, uh, yeah. You know, no, I mean, f for some needs. And there is some needs that are not filled by the dominant Mainstream. music. Mainstream. Speaking about Arab, there is a pro proverb saying, those who, who don't feel the Tarab are not part of the Arabs. Mm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say it in Paris. That is, there is a quality of emotion which is given by Oriental music in general, Arab especially, that you don't find in other genres. Of course, in other genres, even in light pop music, you have other, uh, it, it answers to other needs. So we need all this uh, diversity. And you, can, you cannot just say that, no, this is old stuff. I'll give you an example. I was uh, spending uh, one, one week in Tunisia going to <coughs> concert three, three times a day. It was all new style of music, new, more or less Tunisian uh, style or Arabic <coughs> style. And it was very interesting, fascinating. It fulfills the intellectual needs, expectation, aesthetical needs, whatever you want, and uh, very innovative. But I noticed several times when a musician with a violin or a oud or something, even with a synthesizer, did a kind of uh, up, down, go back to the karor, to the modulation, you see all the public who say, oh, Allah. And this uh, short is really the expression of a feeling, and it's very important to keep this feeling. And this feeling, is, is, is really the root of, of, of musicality in itself. There are many different types. There is a music, a dynamic, which you need to, to, to work, to move. There is a music to meditate. There is a music to pray. And there is a music for emotion. And uh, Arabic music, uh, has one of the speciality, I would say, is this uh, tarab, this emotion. And uh, it's, it's a pity if you just uh, if it should disappear. So, Bernina, if uh, Tarab is part of being Arab, is it possible that the youth who are rejecting traditional Arabic music are rejecting part of their Arab identity, or in fact, Kulian, wholly, their Arab identity? Could there be actually some kind of rebellion in one's change of tastes in music? The situation is not as tragic as it sounds. Uh, talking about uh, the Levant, I am not a good friend of Arabhood, as it is spreading today. But on regarding the practice of music, music tradition, not the uh, classical mu Arabic music. There are several tradition, which are different colloquialism. There are many tools available today to listen to, to, listen to this tradition. There is a radio internet uh, with the Amar establishment. Uh, the, you, the young can be introduced to it and listen with profit to some programs which introduce this traditional that. There are other frameworks that uh, touch the young and the less young even. There are in, uh, there we have several frameworks in Lebanon and there are many young musicians, some of whom are present here and are enthusiastic and are very good performers of this music. 
there is no dichotomy between the these traditions and the, the youth, but the problem uh, is the non-proliferation of this. Uh, Professor During talked about that. There are no uh, media that are dedicated to this kind of music. In Europe, there are, but not here. But unfortunately, we have no such thing here. But we can, but we can do more. Laurent Aubert spoke about that, and he is he's supervising uh, uh, several frameworks to make this music available in Switzerland and other place, other places. So there is no dichotomy, there is no breach, but the responsible people uh, in uh, foundations and institutions must make these kinds of music available to people because they have to make that music living and continue because they are essential expressions of identity. Each identity needs languages, needs uh, vehicles to transmit uh, themselves. In Syria, before the war, there, there were, there were, uh, there were uh, communities that uh, were cradles for these traditional that. In Aleppo, for instance, there were communities where these, this kind of music or that, um, uh, where this music could be linked with uh, with Sufism and uh, the uh, Zikr and all that. So we must work to uh, preserve this uh, these traditions even during and even after the uh, the crisis ends. And in Malula, for instance, there is a tradition which is almost extinct because of this crisis. Now, not only the tangible, uh, the tangible uh, uh, heritage must be re uh, restored, but but uh, this rift that happened uh, must be uh, restored. Not not only as archaeomusicology, but as a living practice. Because the, the traditions are not heritage, they are tools to renew, to renovate the, the tradition. A, tra a tradition is a tool to transmit knowledge or a certain craft or a secret, an artistic secret. And There is something that happens and something that is transmitted at this end. And this is the, the main characteristic of a tradition is not its uh, rigidity, but it's something that, that is promising for the future. Um, I very much agree indeed that um, uh, communities in Syria had a unique uh, musical identity uh, individually, but also um, collectively it only created a sense of unity. Uh, the Kurds and the Armenians, and as you said in Aramaic, um, and also because music was very much part of traditions, weddings, funerals, uh, you know, commiserations and, and celebrations. Uh, but it, was, it never seemed to create friction between communities, quite the opposite, it was a lovely way uh, to come together. At this point, I will open the floor to uh, the may, may I say something which we Absolutely. Should really have? Absolutely. Uh, Think of your questions while Richard... Uh, uh, there's some, the something which I, I participated some time ago with the BBC in a, a world survey of lullabies. And I think lullabies are extremely important mm -hmm. in, in all what we discussed. 
And I specifically spoke about lullabies in ancient Mesopotamia, of course, because this is my field, but who we went to all lullabies in North Africa and, and in Iraq and so forth, Lebanon. But uh, we realized that now mothers switch on the TV or the radio and poor babies are submitted the most atrocious material. And I do believe that it is fundamental, it is essential that mothers restart this lullaby system, which is a basis for the training of the baby's ear, and which is fundamental to his ab or her upbringing in the modern world, when then they can decide if they want to listen to pop, it's perfectly all right. But their source material must come from the mother. After all, the first utterance, the first sounds the baby hears from the mother, and it is essential that this tradition should uh, 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 continue, absolutely. Much good. Uh, do we have a question from the floor? Maya? Oh, we have a microphone. Thank you. Thank you for uh, this good presentation. Actually, uh, it's just it's, uh, one really question. It's just, uh, I think that uh, the main role that should be played cannot be by individuals. And this is our problem in our region. We always think that one person will change something or one like one collective or personal can change something. I think what is missing really is the cultural policies. We cannot like uh, put music on radio if we don't have a ministry of culture that are really forcing to do this or giving the annual budget for people who can work on this. So uh, this is what's missing today. Really. It's not the, the intention of people, neither the expertise, because we really have now a lot of very uh, experienced and uh, educated people, but we don't really have the the institution and the real budget that can hold all these together. And this is, I think, what's missing in Lebanon and later on in Syria after the war will come down hopefully soon. One potential that might happen in Syria is that we have a clean slate. And sometimes introducing policy when you have a clean slate in a new government, depending on its willingness, um, uh, will enable better policy. Uh, if we do have a clean slate, what policy would you advise? Something new. Uh, we start from scratch. Tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. So, yes, please. Actually, in Syria, it wasn't really. Uh, it was working uh, before the war started. From 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 what I know, it was really going on. It was really. They were trying to build like institutions to preserve the, the heritage and to, to to document Syria. Yes, so, all so those institutions so went we back. Not, not always try to distract what was happening before and rebuild, maybe we should like uh, I'm stop the rupture and absolutely continue what was doing Anything before, that so. was positive and had a positive influence should be uh, not just kept but developed further. Uh, but at the same time, while there was much in the way of cultural initiatives, uh, they were also connected, um, or at least this is uh, my belief, very much connected by one central route. And I think if you have cultural uh, diversity, or at least projects that are culturally diverse by organizations with different but complementary goals, then, I mean, this is, the, this is, is my thought. Um, but my question uh, was, if we do have the opportunity, uh, there are many people now planning transitional uh, uh, concepts for Syria, be it economic or political, um, uh, military, but the cultural plan, what would be your advice um, for new cultural policy in Syria? I would say education. Education starting at school. We talk about lullabies. The next step is uh, kindergarten. And uh, in this field, uh, Professor Abu Murad uh, has a great experience because he educated educators and uh, got wonderful results I've seen myself. Uh, here in Lebanon, and uh, it's no problem to adapt uh, this method to, to any places uh, in this region. Can you tell Can us you about the success of your projects with education and culture? Uh, there is uh, some... Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> some. Uh, about them, uh, uh, S some colleagues have uh, our teachers and instructors who are specialized in music have worked hard to construct, to build methodologies to, uh, to teach. Uh, Bushra Bashalani and Hayaf Yassin have worked on methodologies to teach for the first education recycle to 
to for uh, uh, raising awareness uh, in music regarding uh, uh, popular music to educate young children uh, so that uh, people learn about these traditions and all that lore is in the Lebanese colloquial language which is very close to Syrian uh, colloquial language we can enlarge that project to Syria also and try to uh, there were some experiences in the uh, uh, Syrian Institutes for Music there were attempts to generalize these experience experiences but they did not uh, they did not flower because most probably because the uh, social awareness was not enough raised perhaps in, in the next uh, uh, government institution should take a ch charge of this uh, this approach to teach language in the first, second uh, uh, educational cycles uh, where we could uh, teach pluralism, linguistic musical pluralism in our schools. We teach classical uh, occidental uh, Western music but we not teach our own music with the same enthusiasm uh, our own lang uh, languages. It is very important to know the different musical traditions of the world. Uh, do we have another question from the floor? Okay. A couple of points. Uh, the lullabies are very important. And um, one thing, I, I've lived in Syria now for 20 years. I have two children who have gone through the education system. Um, and from where I'm from, I had music my entire life. From kindergarten all the way until I graduated from high school, I had music. When it was time to educate our children, there was no music in the school. And I used to, my husband, I used to cry because I felt like without music, my children could not be civilized. I didn't care what kind of music, they had to have music. And the only way was in the conservatoires or private. And they grew up, both of them did play music, one continued, the other, no, I didn't. <laughs> but they were alone. There were very few opportunities for them to play with other people, just to hang out and play. Everybody had private lessons. Everybody were in their bubble, learning whatever kind of music that they were playing. And people didn't sing to each other. They would listen to songs. They would sing the songs that they were hearing on the radio. But they weren't really singing. Uh, together and it just kind of a group informally and so I felt like uh, music became a very isolated um, event. Uh, when my son, I, I was very concerned that he was learning piano but he couldn't play with other people because he never did. Then he started learning the oud and he loves the oud and he, he got the books, he's in Kaofum, he's, he's going back, he's referring back and trying to learn but still he's alone. And I think that there is a problem that people tend to learn music alone right now. Um, I don't know about Lebanon's experience, but I know that in Syria, it, unless you want to make a band, you know, there, there's a huge heavy metal movement in Syria and where people would come together and make bands. So I think that encouraging children just to play and singing, bringing back the tradition of just singing, Important. When this, what you said is extremely important, you can you can send the child of whom we are uh, interested. There is a class for group music for children and the young, where he can bring his oud on the Antonian. Uh, Hassan Sahab in the Antonian uh, University is animating this class. Your son is most welcome every uh, Thursday at 6.30 in the Antonian uh, University. Um, 
I very much agree. I, uh, I grew up in London, but I would watch some films with American schools, and they had these big brass bands or bands of any kind, and it was something that brought school children together. Uh, but in Syria and other Arabic countries, all teaching of all subjects seems to be in isolation. Here's your book, learn it, study it. Um, so I think that's part of the education system in general. Um, but uh, yes, something that we need to keep in mind for our future. Do you have a question? Just a follow-up. Yeah. The way we instruct uh, and the way we pass on the knowledge is in of itself part of the language. Um, the, uh, the apprenticeship program in music uh, the way the masters pass the knowledge to their disciples uh, in groups is part of the language. And in many ways, um, even though we might be preserving this in museums uh, and documenting it, but we're losing this very vital uh, generation to generation uh, event. And I think part of the issue that we need to be looking at uh, for Syria in the future is how do we recreate those connections? Uh, where people learn from each other in, in groups, learn to pass the knowledge, not only the knowledge, but how to pass the knowledge. Because part of the crafts uh, of musicians was also to teach music. So we need to probably also look at not only the musical uh, heritage, but the craft of teaching music as well. And this is probably some of the things that has not been documented and is not likely to be documented. Uh, and unfortunately, it is part of the instruction of building a community. And this is probably something we need to think about in Syria as part of the peace building process, is to recreate these processes where people learn from each other. Uh, it is very vital for uh, to recreate communities. How do you suggest we speak? Uh, yes, this issue is very important. Uh, speaking about uh, first uh, having uh, access to the music is one step, uh, but uh, it, it will help to uh, emulate uh, the desire to practice. The, the second step is how to practice. Here we have uh, different models. There is a conservatory models. Uh, which uh, most often um, is kind of a pale copy uh, of a Western method, and which are uh, much misleading. But there are, in some cases, the conservatory system works. Uh, I spent much time in, in, in Central Asia, and I've seen that uh, the result of conservatory training was not that bad uh, that we thought. Uh, and, uh, but the most important is that the possibility to establish a relation with a teacher, a master or teacher, uh, a disciple or, or, or a, a, a student, it doesn't matter. And uh, the, here it's only a, mat a question of strategy. It's music school, okay, and then you have also clubs. In Soviet times, they were clubs. So just give a place where people meet and, and they have, a, because, because most often they have no, no, no room uh, for, for uh, uh, rehearsal, no place. I, I have this, had this problem in, in Baluchistan, in Karachi, a great figure, great master. He says, I'm, I'm asking nothing from government or, or ONG, just give me a room, because I, there are already 10 people living in my room. I cannot teach, and so at least this place, and there were clubs in Central Asia, which were very important for, for the education. Uh, so so, so this, this is one issue, when, for speaking about ONG and action, uh, I, for three years I was working for Aga Khan uh, uh, Trust for Culture, for uh, music in Central Asia, and uh, we s set up a very simple system. We identified uh, great musicians, masters, who were iso isolated, isolated, not part of the system of conservatory. It means that they don't care about notation or westernization, it just plays traditional <laughs> way. So these people were appointed, we gave them uh, a place, and uh, with a, a quite modest salary, they accepted disciples, 
and uh, th then it flourishes like this in a very uh, efficient way. It, but of course, we need at the beginning we need some help, some concrete uh, sponsoring or NG or whatever. And here there is a danger. I want just to underline also. Uh, in some cases, when when the government is uh, uh, mingling in in this process, you will see <coughs> they instrumentalize music in the meaning that they utilize for for nationalistic, uh, not identitarian, nationalistic purpose, and they will give in, in, uh, orders that go this way and do this and that, and this is very bad. Actually, I, I'm always working with Iran, and, and uh, one of the positive points in Iran is that the, the government doesn't care at all about music. So it l let people <laughs> do it as they want. <laughs> and it's much better than in some places where, where you have official uh, the, that direction. Thank you. <clears throat> we have another question. Uh, education is important. In the Music and transfer into the new, uh, the next generation, but in reality, I, I believe uh, uh, the collaboration between decision makers and musicians is very important. But uh, the uh, the issue is not just maintaining and preserving the music; it's developing <coughs> music for the new generation and the way that we are representing that music. For instance, comparing Western music with uh, Eastern music, or Oriental music, you would call it Oriental. Uh, in Western music, we have major and minor as main, main systems. And in, uh, in uh, Eastern music, we have 12 maqams, for instance. In uh, Arab music or Persian music, you mentioned, uh, um, for instance, some daskas, uh, uh, Arabic shur or sagar, those daskas, they, they are completely, they have different structure than Western, uh, Westernized uh, systems. But how we can develop them and uh, make it polyphonic uh, orchestra and uh, write music for new generations that are, if we cannot represent that music the way they understand it and they like it and it's not updated music, definitely they find some uh, replacements. So uh, I, I believe uh, part of the issue also of future policies is uh, the burden on uh, musicians, that they need to work more about development of this kind of music, and it has the capability, and is, they have so much value that needs to be to, to be this rate. Do you have a, a precise proposition about how we could develop the, the tradition music? Is that? Do you think that uh, to develop that kind of music should uh, be orchestralized, for instance, or you think that development is uh, an auto-development based on the internal systems of the music itself, which renovate itself throughout, but with uh, an inner momentum? What what do you uh, what do you propose? I cannot uh, uh, give any comments about Arab music, but about Persian music that I know, uh, Mr. During they had uh, ready, uh, you played the Divi Nur Ali Burman Persian music, and I have those uh, radifs. And uh, for instance, in Persian music, we have five major systems. <coughs> That's God. But if we compare it with the uh, uh, Western music that Ruben Lata did, in five five Daskars, we have different structures. But some mu musicians, for instance, Ruhul Lafadev in, in Iran, he made or, the orchestra, uh, orchestration. It's polyphony. And how polyphony. Yes. Bring the, right, them. right. But uh, other musicians now, they are just 15, 15 instruments are playing just the same melody. It's, it's boring for two hours. A new, new generation cannot listen to that. If somebody is, uh, is loving that music. First, there, there are some prejudice in your question. The prejudice, first prejudice is that, uh, like science, uh, like technology, art uh, develops. Mm. Darwin. Darwin. Uh, so, so it means that that for sure, uh, uh, Jackson Pollock is more advanced than uh, uh, Botticelli. Mm. Okay, because it's more modern. So it's. Per 
And it means that, uh, I don't know, Pierre Boulez is more advanced. It's more advanced music than, than uh, Monteverdi, of course. But th this doesn't work, and no philosopher can accept this. Now, if the idea is to find new ways to express uh, yourself, why not? Polyphony is a way. Uh, in Iran, especially, they tried hard to harmonize this, and the that it doesn't work because of the Zalzalian scales. So now they, they like to... You can do what you want. You, you, you can use this... Uh, I, I think musicians now, traditional musicians, uh, have the duty to uh, have a certain knowledge of the new tools. I don't mean that, uh, and that they use it, but they must have the knowledge. Uh, the solfeggio is, is a good thing, it's positive. Indian had their solfeggio, China had their own solfeggio, yeah. and the uh, ancient uh, Arab had, had their own and, and their own way to explain things. So, so it, it's a, a technical tool. Also, instrument can be improved with technology like, like metallic string. Okay, so, but, but it's, not, it's, it's not mandatory, you know, that we must. Uh, now, uh, the fact that to play polyphony, uh, mon monophony with uh, uh, s s three octaves, of course, it's a bit ridiculous. Uh, uh, but there are other, other ways to develop uh, music. For instance, I, I worked, uh, I tried to, f to show a, a line, a one just little line of development for Persian music is to, to take inspiration of the rhythm of the usul. In, in Iran, they used three, four usul all the time. Uh, and, but here you have very sophisticated usul. Why not use it again? Exactly like uh, uh, harmony dominate uh, at one time uh, Western music, and then there is no more question of harmony. We, we go back to kind of mixing and looking for for sonority. So there are many ways to, for music to, to develop. It doesn't mean that uh, to, to be more modern. Uh, how would you respond to that? So. Well, the, I think that there are two things. One thing is, I mean, the, the basic question we were discussing today is how to give access to uh, a music which represents local identity. Right? Well, Still, I would question the, the word local or national identity because it's a little perverse, uh, but still. And now, uh, your question raises another problematic, which is that uh, music should, should develop. And anyway, it develops because uh, any performer would represent not only the musical system or structure in which he or she uh, plays or sings, but also his own personality and its own time. Uh, music which I know a, a little more than others, it's, it's classical music from India. If you listen to recordings of the early uh, 20th century, the way of performing this music has totally changed. But still, the rules are exactly the same. They did not touch the rules. They play rag in, in the, as purely uh, respecting the, the rules now than 100 years ago, because now we have a background of 100 years of uh, recorded music. But the style has changed. The way people feel and express music has changed because we live in another time. And uh, of course, it's more virtuosic now in a certain way, a little more extroverted, maybe less spiritual or, let's say, a less meditative approach and more showing off, more, I mean, I will not go into details of that, but anyway, it transforms itself, that's what I mean. Now, the idea to, to bring new tools like symphonization, uh, melodic music, you, you were mentioning the, the Soviet area in Central Asia, they tried that very hard. In China, they tried too. But the result was, most of the time, not very satisfactory. And uh, because these tools are brought from outside, and uh, they're not in 
There is no compatibility. Yes, that's what I mean. It's not inherent in the logic with Japanese of such music. music, as far as I can say, because I, I don't want to be dogmatic. I, I would like to conclude with a question which uh, you may all answer, please. The original question was, does Syria need its cultural heritage or its mm. musical heritage yes. in order, order to have a creative future? Uh, in literature, we say, if you want uh, to write a haiku, learn Shakespeare first. I suppose what I've been hearing the past hours is a similar concept. You must know your roots as part of your identity, be it musical, uh, community, national, global, but you must uh, learn about the roots of music mm. uh, within your region in order to develop it. And mm. to be honest, I don't think we're at any or in any danger of Syrian music completely losing its identity. We've heard some wonderful bands this week and the past few years in Lebanon who have fused uh, Western or other genres and Eastern Oriental uh, melodies beautifully. Um, what would you add to that? Do you agree? Is there more to it? Personally, I, I would say it's not a question of agreeing. This is the time we're living in. Mm. I mean, we have no choice. I mean, there is a globalization of everything. It's a fact. We, we must deal with this fact. But it doesn't ex exclude anything. It doesn't exclude, but of course, each musician has the possibility, and each uh, music lover has the possibility to listen to all music. Sorry. And with it's such a vast scope, how would it not affect the, the, the musical expression? Then it's a question of individual uh, choice and individual uh, freedom that you can choose. Uh, or not necessarily choosing. I don't know, Jean, if you have had the feeling that you chose to learn how to play Russian music. I had no choice. That, that's I also a good thing. <laughs> you don't choose. You are chosen by a certain musical expression. We have an audience no. member who either Sorry. wants to respond to the question or, or it's, ask. It's a simple question, or just a, a comment, perhaps. Shouldn't funding be... Uh, I very much welcome a discussion on that at a later time, perhaps over uh, tea and biscuits. Um, but as part of a conclusion, it's a bit lengthy. Although I would say that you need intent before anything else. You have an iPhone, you live near a village, go there, record the woman singing a lullaby she heard when she was a child or a lullaby she sang to her grandchild. I, I think funding is very helpful, but intent, in my opinion, comes before all else. Uh, what would be your closing remarks on tonight? With a My closing remark is that war is uh, part of a phenomenon of globalization. This crisis, crisis. we are faced crisis we are faced with is uh, also one of the result of globalization. A globalization which tends to uh, uh, take out the route to to tabula rasa in order to establish a new state, a new state of things. And um, in, the, in this specific case, you notice that um, music has a role. Uh, music is deeply disliked by these people who take Islam as a pretext to destroy civilization. I mean, it's among people who are totally unsensible to music. I don't blame people who are not sensitive to music. That it, it's had happened. But it's, 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 okay, it's among these people who dislike music that you find the terrorist. And you say Che Guevara was a musical. 
all these people get angry when they hear music, then they see instruments, they destroy the instrument. And only for this reason, we must play music, we must sing music, so they would, would be annoyed. And, and, and so there is an, it, it's an, I mean, doing music in this time, in this condition, is an act of resistance. Mm -hmm. It happened also in little moments in revolutions after period, after uh, or during Iranian revolution during a while, it was a resistance. I remember even against the Shah, uh, the, a resistance. I, I've seen poster uh, of a guy with big mustache, which means that he was perhaps Sufi. A, a, a drawing, handing not a, a weapon but a setar, you know, <laughs> yes. a, a bazook. This is my weapon. <laughs> yes. uh, it's like. Um, uh, Mushtaq Ali Shah, a great saint, he was playing the setar, and, and his setar, he, he, he called it the, the, the stick to hit the, the, the dogs. Mm. The dogs, he means mullah, he means the, the, the bad mullah who condemn after, at the end uh, for, for praying with the setar. You know? you. So I think this is resistance, uh, and only for this reason we, we should do what, <coughs> what we can. And accepting, uh, I would say, blind uh, anything which comes from the West is, in a way, playing the game of globalization too. We must be aware and cautious. Okay, any form is fine, you like it, but don't forget these roots. And here, uh, Arabic music has a, a role to play in the processes on anti-globalization. Why? Because as my colleague defined so well, they have intonation, specific intonation, Zalzalian intonation. In another place, you, you have this, uh, this special scale, special rhythm. The rhythm we have played, seven beats, this is forbidden mm -hmm. in global music. It, you never hit this pom you see? And it's a way to, 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 to resist uh, this process of uniformization. Thank you, thank you. Do you have a, a call to make, resistance, revolution, rebellion? It's absolutely uh, right. I agree Could one thousand times that I would like to end up by, by, by quoting something which works against us, who you reminded me of, that Woody Allen said, every time I hear Wagner, I want to invade Poland. <laughs> Very nice, thank you. Uh, Dad, do you have some words of wisdom for us? No, it's well, thank you very much to the panel and to the audience. Um, we wish you a pleasant night, and as I said, more discussion over tea and biscuits outside. Thank you. Thank you.